who is the real Lottie Moss? I think I'm still trying to figure that out myself, honestly. Um, <laughs> Lottie Moss, British model and media personality. This could have gone without doing. She is also Kate Moss's sister. I was just like really wild. All of that was me trying to figure out who I was. One really, really big fad that's going on right now is Ozempic. Ozempic could become the best selling drug of all time. There's a lot of things written about me in the press. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I tried it. I literally had a seizure. Hi, I'm Abby Clancy and welcome to Exhibit A. Today's guest is a controversial party girl who's known for a bold and wild lifestyle, or at least that's what we've been told. So let's get to know the real Lottie Moss. Hello, Welcome, thank you Lottie. so much for having me on. Thank you for coming. You look gorgeous. I love the opening, wild party girl. I'm like, do you know what? I actually am. That is so true. <laughs> I know, but I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think you can be two things. You know, I'm like, I feel like now I'm becoming much more of a homebody as I'm getting older. Yeah. Well, I'm not like older, older, but you know, like I, as I'm going from my like early 20s and my like really wild life to now I'm a bit more like, I want to stay at home and watch Netflix with my cat, you know? So The question I always start with my guest is, you know, Many people have this perception of you. You know, they see things in the press, they read these stories, but I want to know who is the real Lottie Moss? I think I'm still trying to figure that out myself, honestly. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think when I was young, I really didn't know who I was. I think that's why I struggled so badly with, you know, what I was saying to the press and what I was kind of doing, you know, the part, the excessive partying, the excessive alcohol, the excessive drugs. I think all of that, was kind of me trying to figure out who I was. Mm. And when you find those parts of yourself that you might not like, you know, and you, you know, when you're, when you're growing up, you sort of see these parts of yourself and you're like, oh my God, I don't like that. Like, oh, and you yeah. kind of get scared of it and kind of try and reject it. But the more you reject it, the worse you get mentally. And now I've gotten a bit older and I've had that therapy and I've been to rehab and I've, you know, I have better relationships with my friends and I've gotten rid of toxic people. And mm -hmm. now I'm really starting to figure out who I am. Yeah. Um, and I think it's all as well coming down to like, you know, kind of finding your inner child again, like the person that I used to be before I was mm. Lottie Moss, you know? Um, what so, was your yeah. childhood like? I had a really chill childhood. Like I, I grew up in Sussex, so mm. near Surrey actually where you live. Um, I love Sussex. I love it. It's so I'm beautiful. Always looking it's at a houses similar there. vibe, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Mm. And it's, I mean, it's just gorgeous. Mm. And, um, you know, I grew up very, my parents had like very, you know, small house, which was very like cutesy um, in the countryside. And, yeah, I went, I could walk to school with my friends. It was like, all of us lived on the same road, all of our friends and everything. So, um, yeah, I had a very, very like quiet up upbringing and um, the school I went to didn't have a lot of people in it. It was very, so I think going from that to going to like London. Which was when you were 18. <laughs> when I was 18. And um, I mean, I went back and forth a little bit before then, but like nothing like how I did when I was, when I moved there. I think it was such a dramatic change. Yeah coming from just like being a really small, small town, like, mm. you know, like my biggest like city that I would go to was like Brighton. <laughs> you know, that was like a big night Brighton's out for fun, me. Though. It is I really, really fun. I still love Brighton, but I think that was kind of like the most sort of like town city kind of thing I'd seen. Yeah. So when I moved to London, it was like a lot of like, I was very overstimulated, I think. <laughs> going back to your school years, I was listening to your podcast Dream On the yeah. other day and you said you actually paid yourself to go to this private school yeah. just so you could be near this hot guy. Yeah, so I <laughs> I love it. I love the way that's teed up, but it is true. Like, it's how, when I hear it, I'm like, I'm actually a psycho. Like, I'm crazy. But I went because my ex-boyfriend went to this private school. Okay. And I was like, there's no way in hell you're getting over me. And you won't get over me if I go to the same I'm school gonna as you. Because I'm going to stalk you. <laughs> I mean, half of me was like, maybe, because I, was, I wasn't doing very well at school when I was at my school before I went to my, like, so I think this was up until 16. Okay. The school I went to wasn't very good. Like the teachers kind of had given up. Like mm -hmm. they were very much like, they would put the, your work in front of you. And then if you didn't want to do it, you would just like say like, off, you know, and then they were like, okay, sorry. So they didn't really care. So I think part of me thought maybe it's not me. Maybe it's like the teachers yeah. and like stuff. So maybe if I went to a better school and I knew the school that my ex went to had no entrance exam. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to go there. Because <laughs> um, if there was an entrance exam, I'm not getting in. Um, but yeah, so I went to that. And then, yeah, I mean, it was pretty crazy. But like, he actually didn't even know until I got there as well. So I just showed up on the first day and he was like, what are you doing here? And I was like, How did he take I'm here that? for us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for us. <laughs> what did he say? He was like, 
He just thought I was crazy. We actually did not end up getting back together, shockingly. Mm. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't recommend to anyone watching or listening to to stalk your ex-boyfriend <laughs> anywhere. How did um, you pay for that? So I got scouted when I was 13. Yeah. And um, I didn't start properly working until I was about 15, 16. Mm -hmm. But by then, I was already making quite a lot of money. So like 15, 16, I think was like... I was, I'd done my first job for Calvin Klein, which I'd got quite a significant amount of money for. And I'd done Vogue and I was doing, um, I'd done Valentino. So I think those jobs had like kind of set me up for a good little run. Yeah. I hadn't done a lot, but I'd done a fair amount. So it was enough to send me to this private school. Wow. And I think I just was like, you know, if I can do it, like I can do it. So yeah. <laughs> I think that's romantic. <laughs> you are so me I'm like I think that's romantic too I, I really do yeah so you know Kate Moss is your sister yeah she's the biggest supermodel on the planet the most famous the most gorgeous how how does it feel to be a sister and you know do you feel like you're living in a shadow did you feel pressures to you know you scouted at 13 did you always want to be a model or did you feel like you had to do it or you had to prove yourself um, I think I had, th I mean, I thought about it only because she was doing it and I'd see her in the press, I'd see her in the magazines and all of this. I actually joked, um, yesterday I did a talk X and I joked that I didn't, I didn't know that nobody had like sisters in magazines. Like I thought everyone was <laughs> yeah. like, I was like, oh, where's your sister? Like, that's yeah. mine. Like, where's yours? Like, mm. I, I just really didn't know that, that I, that, that was not normal. Um, but as I got older, I think seeing her, you know, do this, seeing the, the, how glamorous it was. Like, obviously when I was younger, I didn't see all of the, you know, the like dark side of the modeling industry. Yeah. And so I just really thought it was super glamorous and super fun. And yeah, so that's kind of when I decided that I wanted to do it. But also getting scouted at her wedding was like a huge a huge thing and probably wasn't the greatest for her. Like it was meant to be her wedding day. And I kind of took the limelight a little bit from that. But um, but yeah, I mean, it was difficult. I mean, all of everyone that I knew would have like posters of her. Everyone knew who she was. You know, I used to get teased because she was in Playboy when I was younger by all the boys. They were like, we've seen your sister's boobs. But, <laughs> um, but um, I think now I can, she, you know, she could, people can say to her that they've seen my boobs. So <laughs> um, yeah, but I think it's difficult. But I mean, it's come with pros and cons. I think yeah. so there's, there's good and bad in it, you know. So what was your experience of the model industry like at such a young age? Because, you know, for a lot of girls, it's hard. You know, they're going on castings every day. It's it's a lonely world. You know, it can be dark at times. Yeah. But for you, you went in at such a high level. That's the, the thing. I brands. was actually very lucky when I yeah. think about it. Because as you say, there are so many girls that are going to castings at like such a young age and like doing, I mean, back-to-back -back castings mm -hmm. all day, going all sides of London, going to like Milan, Paris. And I did get it very lucky yeah. because I was already, you know, somebody's sister and I was, you know, the nepotism situation. So I did get it very lucky. But obviously I think the principle is still the same. The people in that industry mm -hmm. still have a lot to answer for, I think, for the the mental health of the clients that they you know take on like the models that they take on because they don't treat them very well and it's not just me you know I speak and I've spoken to loads of models yeah. and um I went on a podcast once and spoke about you know how my old agency had treated me and I had so many girls from that come up to me and say oh my god I've had the exact same experience like yeah. you know I was like bullied I was you know told I was fat I was told to lose weight I had an eating disorder I used to starve myself like all of these things and so there is a lot of mental pressure because you're around as well all these beautiful models all day and especially at castings you're seeing you're comparing yourself to everyone consistently yeah. so that's never good for your mental health especially when especially, you're like first you know uh, yeah, when you're young especially at that young age because yeah. as well like if these girls and yourself included you know it's their dream job yeah it's the first time they've been in this situation they might think you know this is not what you're trying this to is do is happens. figure out who you are yeah so you're looking at all these other people and getting inspiration for all these other people and thinking i need to be like that if i'm going to be successful and if that is you know if the people that are successful are skinny and gorgeous and look like that then you're going to want to be exactly that you know at that age so i think that wasn't the healthiest definitely Talk me through life as a young model. What is the dark side? Um, I think definitely being the suppression of like eating, I think is a big one. Like uh, 
I, I got told, like, <laughs> I mean, I've said this before, but I literally, I used to walk into my agency and if I was eating something, they'd be like, oh my God, like she's eating again. Like they would fully make fun of me. I'm laughing, so I but that to, is ridiculous. It, it is so ridiculous, isn't it? You're like, it, like obviously we all eat, we need to eat to live. <laughs> yeah. But like if I was eating something, they would sort of make fun of me if it was something that had like carbs in it or whatever. Um, and then obviously if I, you know, when I was first starting out, I had no idea what to wear to castings. Like I was just like, I had like Topshop jeans that I would wear every day. I, I didn't really have much money when I first started out, obviously. And I would wear an outfit, like a, a casting or go to my agency and they'd go, oh my God, you look ridiculous. Why are you wearing that? Like, can't believe you thought that looked good. Like go into the, and they'd have a room that you could go in and pick out clothes that they would buy clothes just for like models to wear. And so I'd have to wear something from that. But it was just, I think it was just being put down consistently, I think is the dark side of it. If you don't fit the mold of what they want, yeah. which back in my day, like nowadays, I think it's become much more diverse. diverse and like they are much more accepting of people nowadays. But when I started 10 years ago, they were like, you look like this, you eat that, you don't eat, you don't, you know, you don't have any makeup on. And like now I think they've actually become a lot more lenient with makeup. But like back in the day, you weren't allowed to wear any makeup to castings. Yeah. You had to wear a black tank top and black jeans and black like pumps. And that was all you wore to castings. Um, I mean, you'd bring like your sh little shoes with you, like little like little ballet heels. slippers or something. Yeah. So like change into because you weren't going to walk around London and that. But I mean, I think, yeah, just the pressures of that. I think, you know, being on set with creepy photographers, I think being like surrounded by, you know, agents who would like tell me to get a personal trainer at 18 years old when I was like tiny. And they told me I had to be a 23 inch waist and 32 hip, which by the way, like you can't change your hip size really. No. You know, if you're that skinny, like I was a 23 waist, like I wasn't going to get much skinnier than that. And my my hips are quite big naturally and they just weren't going to get any smaller. And they would be like, you have to make this. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Like break my bones? Like, yeah. <laughs> like do you want me to go to the doctors? Like, so I think there was just all those pressures. And then on top of like the Instagram starting to become a thing and then seeing all of these people. And I remember going to a casting, which was Alexander Wang when I was younger. And I, I know I've seen the runway for like Alexander Wang and it's all very, very thin models and very tall. And I remember getting there and I genuinely thought someone had like pranked me. I was like, I so don't belong here. All the models were like six foot. And I even had, I had a situation once where I got there and they thought I was hair and makeup. Oh my God. No, I swear to God, they were like, hair and makeup's back there. And I was like... I've had that as well before. No way. <laughs> yeah. No way. Isn't it the worst? Yeah. It's so embarrassing. When I turn up with no makeup on, they're like, yeah, hair and makeup's there. <laughs> no way. Yeah. I don't, I don't. I love the hair and makeup team. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, exactly. So like, yeah, exactly. Fine. Yeah. No, I was like, getting mistaken for hair and makeup wasn't my finest moment. But I mean, it is what it is. Like, I think... Those ha those moments have definitely made me like so much stronger as a person now. But so, it's not always the case. You know, there'd be a lot of yeah. girls who would really succumb to that. Oh my and God, it yeah. would completely as destroy in, I never, them. I never had an eating disorder, luckily. But like there are so many girls from that sort of thing that have yeah. got eating disorders. It's what probably the most common thing that you get in the modeling industry um, mentally, you know, or depression and anxiety. But... Yeah, it's 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 like constantly worrying if you're not going to get a job the next day, if, you know, your time is over, if, yeah. you know, you're not relevant anymore and all of this. So I think it's just so many different pressures. And I think along with me being in the public eye yeah. and having that stress, mm -hmm. like I was doing what every normal like 19, 20 year old was doing, which was going out like four times a week yeah. and drinking. And I was getting like crucified for it on the Daily Mail. Like I was, you know, so different. And I just didn't understand it. I I really, I think I sort of succumbed to that that brand of being like the wild party girl. For yeah. I was like, you know what? My sister was that. And I really just wanted to be like my sister when I was younger. I really just like, and I just... So is that is that what the, the draw was for I you think in originally, the model industry? Yeah, I really like just saw my sister and I I wanted her approval and validation so much. Yeah. And I thought if I act, if I'm like her, then she'll like love me and like want to be around me. And it all sounds so sad, but... No, it doesn't. But, yeah, I, I think and, that's what any younger sister thinks of their elder sister. Yeah. And so that's, I think, when I started partying pretty hard when I would first moved to London because I sort of wanted her to sort of reach out and then yeah you know but then it kind of became something that was a bit of a crutch as well and it, it became something that was my only escape really like I was working so much and I was away all the time mm -hmm. so when I finally got to come home and be with my friends 
I was like, right, let's just go out, let's get hammered. Because then it wasn't anyone telling me where to be, what what my hair should look like, how I was supposed to act, what I wasn't allowed to wear. Like, even I had a stylist who told, like, he was actually a friend of mine. I loved him. But he got told by my agency to not let me wear, like, anything that was not a good, considered a good brand, even to the shops. Like, I went to the Tesco's once and got paparazzi. And they were like, oh, you look ridiculous. You can't be wearing that to the shop. I was like, go to Tesco's. Like... Which I'm not going to chuck on like a Dior ball gown to go exactly. down the road. <laughs> do, do you think the modeling industry is a safe place for teens? And looking back, do you think it was the right industry for you? I don't at think that it's, age? I really think it needs to be more protect. Like they, the younger girls that are starting to do modeling need to be far more protected. I yeah. think when you turn like 20 ish, you're kind of okay, like yeah. to go into it and have a bit more of a straight mind. But I think if you go into it that young mm. and you're taught that, like, going to these events, drinking loads, you know, like staying really skinny, doing, you know, it kind of promotes quite an unhealthy lifestyle. Yeah. Cause that is what the modeling industry is a lot of the time. It's a lot of events and a lot of alcohol is served at the events. So you're kind of taught that, like, that's normal. Like, yeah. that's okay. You're allowed to drink five nights a week. Mm-hmm. And it's not a re- very, healthy things to think in your mind once you're not working, you know? You yeah. don't think that you wouldn't put two and two together and think, oh, well, it's not acceptable now because everyone around you is just telling you, telling you it's acceptable all the time. Yeah. So. so you're a young girl in London. You're going out three, four, five times a week. The press are painting this crazy picture of you. What are the worst headlines you've ever read about yourself? <sighs> um, I think... I mean, I've seen some pretty crazy ones. I remember when I first did OnlyFans, because I I would say the articles weren't that bad about me until I did OnlyFans. Okay. Because I think, because I was kind of playing along to the societal standards of like what's acceptable. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, modeling, is it's an accepted industry. It's what, you know, nobody would be like shocked if you went into modeling. They'd be proud of you, you know. But I think with OnlyFans, it was something that was not, it was going against the grain a little bit of like, yeah. especially coming from doing like Vogue and Chanel and all these things. And then suddenly doing OnlyFans, I think people what, were pretty shocked. What made you made, make that transition from traditional modeling to that adult world of OnlyFans? <laughs> Honestly, I'd done modeling for quite a long time at that point. Well, I've done it for like five or six years at that point. I just thought, you know what, like... It wasn't making me happy and it was so not me. And it never, ever was, I don't think. Like, I think when I was younger, I had an idea of what it would be. Mm-hmm. And it was so completely not not how it was. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think I ever fit in with the people, ever. Like, when I was around the other girls, I was like, I don't fit in with these people. When I, when I was doing the modeling, I didn't feel, like, confident. I just felt... I felt like these clothes don't fit me properly because I'm not five foot eight, you know? They don't... Like, I didn't feel confident I didn't feel like sexy and when I was younger I used to always watch this show called the girls of the playboy mansion oh yeah I and love that didn't you love that show <laughs> I love that show and I used to look at these girls and think they look so confident and sexy and like they just look like they're having the best time and I always like loved that kind of vibe like Paris Hill and Britney Spears like the little tank tops with like yeah. you know like stop juicy. being the stop being yeah the juicy couture and the like stop being but I love those like little slogan tops and the little like mini skirts like that was always my vibe and I think yeah. when I started doing modeling and they were putting me in like blazers and like all the like and I just thought like this is so not me yeah. so when I when I saw that this OnlyFans was becoming a thing and I had a friend that was doing it I was like, this is so up my street. Like, mm. if you remember that show, like, remember the little girls walking around the lingerie? When I moved to LA to pursue the OnlyFans, I was literally walking around this big mansion in, like, underwear. And I was like, I'm literally living that life. Like, in front of who? In front of people or just no, in your just own mansion? Me and, it would be me and my, like, girlfriends. And we'd all shoot. We'd put underwear on. Actually, one of my friends, Alex, who's here today, that's how we met. <laughs> but she, um, we actually met through that. And we were just, like, shooting out. I was living in a house in Beverly Hills with a couple of friends. And we'd just all, we'd bring the all, like, girls over. We'd get a little bit drunk. And we'd put underwear on and just take pictures of each other and then put it on OnlyFans. And then but it kind of hit met, off. That was met with such shock. And criticism. I know they, I, that that was probably the worst art, um, like headline I've written about. Uh, I've read about myself was the one that said like Lottie Moss has hit rock bottom, mm. and it was literally a picture of me. Like I remember, I just uploaded a picture of me on a Bentley in my house in Beverly Hills, and I was like, yeah, like this is rock bottom. Like, <laughs> like I was actually like in quite a good place at that time, like yeah. feeling quite good, like having fun with it. I was like living my youth, like as, as I, I think it was like away from the press, like mm. in LA. Although there is a lot of like you know celebrities celebrities, they're actually you won't see that many like paparazzi and stuff unless you're like in 
the city, like mm -hmm. if you're like going out or whatever or at restaurant. But I was just kind of living quite like away from the, the British media as well, which yeah. I think is a bit more aggressive than the American. And yeah, and then I came back and I was like, oh my God. And everyone was like, whoa, because it's much more accepted out there also in America. Why do you think that is? The, the Americans are wild, aren't they though? Do you know what I mean? They are just crazy, like in the best way, I think. Like they're, they're so accepting of all these things. I think they can, they see that it's a business opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, like porn or like all of these things. They see it as just like a business opportunity. They're like, you're making money, good for you. They mm -hmm. don't judge like they do here of like, oh, you have to make money in a certain way for it to be considered like acceptable. Yes. Like in America, they're just like, however you make money, whether it's like stealing, robbing, anything like you, you do it. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So I think, yeah, I think that's a little bit. And how was your confidence at this point? You know, you said you went from the modeling, the traditional modeling sense, feeling low self-esteem. And then all of a sudden you're doing OnlyFans. Did, how did you feel in yourself? So much sexier, like so much more confident. And... Um, yeah, I, I felt great. I mean, being in your underwear all day is a pretty fun way of like feeling good about yourself. And that's actually a piece of advice that I give to girls. Like whenever I'm like hanging out with girls or whatever, if I don't know them that well, I'm like, if you ever like need to feel sexy and you don't, put like a great set of underwear on. Get take some Asian hot provocateur. pictures. Yeah, get a glass of wine, get your Asian provocateur on and just take some hot pictures, even if you don't send them to anyone. Yeah. Just to feel like, yeah, like I am that bitch. Mm. <laughs> so did you feel like these... Other OnlyFans girls were like-minded and more supportive. Definitely. Yeah, I find I felt like I'd finally found like my people. Yeah. Like I was like, oh my God, I've actually found people that like aren't judgmental of this kind of thing. And they were all very sweet girls. Like I a lot, most sex workers I've met, like 90% of them are like really, really nice people. Mm. Um and yeah, just really open-minded people who like it's so funny. I think people have this like stereotype and prejudice about them, but most of them are like kind of homebodies who just like chill. They like have a boyfriend. They like stay at home, don't really drink. Like they're very like, they're like hustlers, sex mm. workers. They are hustlers. Um, and I, yeah, I just, I, I mean, I met one of my best friends through it and like, I'm so eternally grateful for like that chapter in my life. Mm -hmm. I, I do feel like um, it may be coming to a bit of an end. Um, and why is that? I think just because like I've outgrown it. Mm. You know, it was it was a part of my life, but I think Moment now I want to be a bit more serious. I want to do other things. Yeah, and yeah. So, so take me back to OnlyFans. What do you do? So I do like naked, like okay, nothing naked. on, absolutely nothing on. Okay. Um, I don't do any sex though. So yeah, it's just like videos of me naked. Okay. And pictures of me naked. <laughs> naked. <laughs> In compromising positions. Okay. But um but yeah, I, I really enjoy it. It's 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 fun. Like and I get I get to do it whenever I want and I work on my schedule and I get to do, you know, use my clothes and my hair and my makeup and everything's on your time. Everything's on my time. So I think that's what I felt a little bit robbed of with the modeling thing. And I'm sure you've yeah. had this where you shot a cover for something and the, then you see the pictures afterwards you and you're like, the they're not the ones that I wanted. Like, yeah. I swear to God, I had so many better ones and they just weren't, you know? That happens to and, me every time, I think. Right. Because you don't really get final approval. This is the thing. Like with magazines, people probably don't know this with editorial, but you don't get final approval if you're the model. Mm -hmm. They they get, the magazine gets final approval. So you see it when it comes out, like the way that everyone else sees it yeah. um, on the newsstands. So the money's good. The money is great. Yeah. I mean, I'm living life well, you know, and mm -hmm. I get to treat my friends and my family. And that's like kind of all I could ever ask and for. And will that not be hard? Like you say you want to move on to new things. You feel like you've outgrown it. Will you not miss the money? This is the thing. I'll do it when I'm making as much money from other things as I am from from OnlyFans. Like mm -hmm. I, I, it's kind of. I think maybe beginning of next year, I might think about slowing down and doing some other things because um, I have a TV show coming out beginning of next year, which I'm hoping will amazing do well. So, can you give us a little sneak, sneak? All bit I of can goss? say, all I can say is that it's a survival show. Do you know what? And this is the thing. I'm so unlike that. That's why I've always said no to TV shows. Like I'm a celebrity and things like that. Because I'm just so, I'm not a nature girl. I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lion, but I don't even lie by the beach. I lie by the pool. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like that's who I am. So I really thought I'd never do a show like that. And then this opportunity came along and I just was like, I have to do it. It was, it was something that I couldn't turn down. So, Amazing. Yeah, Amazing. You'll love it. <laughs> I can't wait to watch it. So this platform, OnlyFans, has given you so much. It's given you it's brought back your confidence. You've got financial stability. Mm. You've got your sense of community. But what has it taken away from you? I think 
at the beginning, obviously I was still doing modeling. So when I switched over, I lost a lot of brand deals, yeah. you know, and I had a collection with the brand and they discontinued that. So there were things like that, but I think, I think it's for the best. I lost things and I lost people as well, but I think it was all good because it like, that's who I truly am. Like I made that decision. I think at the beginning I was like, oh my God, have I made a really wrong decision? But now I know that that's like really me. Yeah. I made that decision for me and did something for me, which I'd never done before. I was always just like going to these events and going to the, I was always doing everything I could to make Please, my others. agency happy and make everyone happy. And even modeling in itself, I was like, this is something that my parents are proud of. And I just was like, this is what I should be doing because this is what's making everyone proud and everyone's so happy for me. And everyone's telling me that this opportunity is amazing, but I didn't really feel it. Yeah. So as much as I, I lost- You can't live like that. You can't live like that. That's the thing. And it's like, you have to just do something for your, you have to live for yourself. Like, mm -hmm. otherwise you go crazy. Like I lost who I was, yeah. I think because of modeling. And then when I finally got it back, like, yeah, I lost a few people and I lost a few, you know, jobs or whatever. But I think- at the end of the day, I think that's probably for the best. The yeah, trash well, took itself out, you know? Exactly. Well, you, you talk on your on your podcast, Dream On, about toxic people. Yeah. You know, toxic relationships, not only in your love life, but being surrounded by toxic friends. Mm. You know, I got, I actually lost a lot of toxic people when I started doing like uh, OnlyFans. Because I think a lot of people were around me because I was doing modeling. Yeah. And because cool. I was going to these, yeah, because I was cool and I was in these really big magazines and I was going to all these really cool events. So as soon as I stopped doing that, I think a lot of people were like, eh. But then it's good because those people, I wouldn't want to be around anyway. Yeah, like, I don't want to be around people that care about what you're wearing, what you're wearing who you're with. Who, yeah, who you're with and where you're going tonight. And if you're going to Fashion Week and like which, you're going to Milan or Paris. Like, I just was like, that was, I see that shit and I think it's corny. Like, I'm just like, that's so lame. Like, who cares, you know? Speaking of toxic relationships, let's go into your love life. Mm -hmm. And you've had quite a tumultuous one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Talk me through it. Oh, gosh. Where do I start? It's like... It's been crazy. I mean, I think when you're a young girl, you always are going for what's wrong for you anyway. And I think growing up and like seeing my sister go for like the rock star boyfriend, I was like, that is what I want. Like the <laughs> yeah. sexy rock star boyfriend, the guy Who in the Who doesn't band. want a rock star? Oh gosh, you know what I mean? They are, but they're great until they're not, you know? Yeah. So I went for a lot of guys, I think on the outside, they, they looked very rock and roll, like you know, kind of, I, I went, I had a little bit of an emo phase actually where I went for like quite emo looking boys with all the face tattoos and everything. But I think <laughs> I was kind of, I would date guys and this is so funny, like I would date guys because I was like trying to like s destroy myself a little bit. Like I was kind of doing it as like a bit of self-harm. Self-sabotage. Self-sabotage, yeah. Um, I think I wasn't, I knew I wasn't in a place to be in a relationship for like ages when I was younger and I just was like very selfish and very crazy and I just knew that like no one was going to come in and, and love me at that stage. And so I was dating guys. I knew it would just be like a month. I knew that it wasn't going to last, you know? And um, yeah, I mean, my first relationship I had was with a Made in Chelsea star. And I think that kind of made me like really just hate relationships. And from then I just, I dated really badly. Um, no, I, I also dated a guy in the Vamps, Tristan. He was lovely. So there were some nice ones like dotted in there, I will say. But um, no, there was, you know, there was a mix of guys. Like I did try and go for like some different types of guys. But you know, it's so hard in your 20s to find guys. It is like, it, I'm in the trenches. I'll be like, I swear to God, like men are trash in this day and age. Trash. Um, and then so I've tried women a little bit as well. How did that go down? Honestly, Excuse I went. I, I was. I was. <laughs> I went on a date with one girl, and we went back to her apartment, and it turned out to be her boyfriend's apartment. <gasps> so, not great. <laughs> Again, um, see, me and my best friend always say like we have such a better relationship than mine. <laughs> you think that? We've but got women, the same honestly, interests. women are evil. Also, she would be clean. <laughs> she would make any mess. House proud. Yes. You know, she wouldn't forget my birthday. True. You know. And my she husband would actually says the same about his best friend. Like, we could play golf every day. If I was home late, he wouldn't complain, you know? But yeah. No, I think it's, I think people think that, but it's like, I think when you're two are really emotional because women are very emotional, you know? Um, so it's like very, it's too like, yeah. you know, but I think, yeah, it depends. But I mean, I have never had a relationship with a girl as of yet, but I would love to. Like, I think maybe that's going to happen now. So I'm new, I'm nearly single. So maybe now is like my time for to date, properly date girls. Um, so are you bisexual? 
I would say I'm pansexual. What's that? Like, I kind of would just go any gender, any sexual orientation. So whether you're like transgender, whether you're, you know, whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm game. <laughs> so it's more about the person. It's than a, basically, else. yeah, it's about the person. Like, I would just, I kind of date people for like who they are. Like, I have such a clear thing in my in my brain of who I want my partner to be yeah. and the qualities I want them to have but in terms of like what they look like I have no preference yeah. like I know I want someone that can laugh with me I know like it's so weird I don't know if you've have, ever had this before you met Peter like where you kind of knew what they were going to be like in your head you like like this is well, I was 19 when I met Peter that's so crazy we've been to together me. like 20 years so oh, we've I can't like, imagine that we have grown up together like we mm. even talk about you know, you talk about like when you were younger, you feel like you were a completely different person. Like when we look back at our wedding, I'm like, who who was How I? How old were you when you guys got married? I was like 22 or something like that. But I, I walked into my wedding to Nicki Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> what song? Moment for Life. My dessert. Oh my I know. God, that is fucking it's amazing. ridiculous. I was like, what the hell? We were getting like helicopters <laughs> to do food. You walked down the aisle to Moment for Life. No, I walked down the aisle with a child on a harp singing You Are So Beautiful. Like, what is, the hell? That is the most, like, t like young wedding ever because it's like, what is like, those things that you, like, would want when you were, like, in your 20s? No, you know, I when know. you look look back in your 30s and you're like, what the I fuck? <laughs> like, oh, my God, that is amazing. Um, my dessert was... If I got married that, if I got married at 22, my wedding would have, would have been the same, honestly. It, it, it would have just... been, like, Starships by Nicki Minaj. I'd have been, <laughs> yes. like, walking, flown down the aisle on a white horse or but something. When, when Someone said, whoever said, whoever suggested, let's get a child on a harp singing You Are So Beautiful. Wait, as you how walked old was the child? I think like 10 or something. <laughs> <laughs> Why not an older person? Why not like know. just a child? God Did you knows. have a wedding planner that like, was the person suggesting Yeah, I got this? a wedding planner who just completely, you know, I was young, impressionable. Oh, that's a good idea. Like my dessert was an, a boiled egg. But it wasn't egg. It was like <laughs> mango. I like shortbread soldiers that you dipped in. It's like, what on earth was I thinking? I would love to see the pictures from this wedding, by the way. Do you like, know what? I know. So would I. I, I. I don't even know who the photographer was or where she is no or way. anything. Yeah. But yeah, oh my gosh, you do grow. Funny. You do grow. Yeah. I, but yeah, I. Th when I saw Peter, I was just like, I. I just. It, sounds, it just clicked. So, yeah. It's. Uh, I saw him in like the paper and I was like this guy needs looking after I don't know what it was oh and, god and then we so met sweet. and it was kind of the rest is history that is crazy as corny as it sounds but when you spoke was it like that instant oh yeah yeah that's what, and that's Literally. what I'm waiting for and I know that it's out there and I oh, think yeah, so many girls like they don't they stay in relationships because they're comfortable and they're like you know, they never have that moment. And I'm so sad for them because I'm like, that moment is out there for everyone. Yeah. You just have to be open to it. Like, I couldn't be in a relationship where I am not in love. I'm the, so the same. You I'm know, like, I need to be like fully, I'm like obsessed with you. So many you people know? are there in relationships yeah. just for convenience or yeah. it's not their soulmate. Yeah, I know. It's sad. It's truly sad. And I know that, you know, I just, and you know, I just was in a relationship that ended and I feel like, it was kind of because I knew that it wasn't like the, the one. The, exactly the one, you know? Yeah. And it was amazing and he was lovely and it was great. You know, I could have stayed in that and been comfortable and happy, but it, it just wasn't, yeah. there was something missing. And I know that I can find it. And I think a few years ago, I never would have given it the opportunity. I would have been like, just stay in this because it's the best you've had in years. You know, I've dated such crap guys. But now I'm like, I deserve, I deserve like everything yeah. that I want, you know? Mm. And not to say he isn't, like a great guy yeah. but his person is also out there you know of course. and if I was to take that away from him that would be selfish of me so you seem in a really good place right now I've got to say and I know you use your platform to talk about mental health awareness you're a real advocate for it um yeah I mean I just I think because I've struggled with it so much and I think no one really spoke about it when I was younger and when I was like kind of going through it like I didn't even speak about it because I didn't know when I first had depression I didn't know I had it because I didn't really talk about it yeah and I didn't want anyone to feel sorry for me I didn't want to like bother anyone mm -hmm. and so when I went to rehab and like figured out that I had depression and everything I think that kind of like tri triggered me in a way of I was like I have to like kind of make other people aware of this and talk about it a bit more mm -hmm. so I kind of just like posted that I was in rehab I posted all of this because I just kind of want people to know like 
pe people are just normal. Everyone's normal. Everyone's just like them. Everyone's just like a human being. We're not like superhuman, you know? Even with this whole Ozempic thing as well, which has been in the press recently, I think it's like, it's important for young girls to know that like, these girls that you see in social media, like they don't look like that because they're like going to the gym every day. They like are on Ozempic, like for sure. Why on air did you go on Ozempic? You are tiny. I know, I felt so, I just, I think I in myself just felt like I didn't feel happy with my body. Mm -hmm. But I think it's probably- Quick fix? Quick fix, for sure. Like I- I weighed 60 kilos, which isn't a lot, but for my weight, for my um, height, sorry, it's like, it's it was a little bit more than I wanted so like to be nine weighing. nine and a half stone, is that? Oh, like nine and, nine and a half stone or something. I don't know, nine stone. I'm not sure. It's not, the thing is, it's not overweight. No, it's uh, not. By any means. But it was just how I felt about myself when I looked in the mirror and all this, seeing all these celebrities, like it was around the time when like Kim Kardashian had been on it and I was seeing all these people getting skinny so quickly and so skinny as well. This isn't like, just like, like I'm a good size now and I'm not large by any means. And I'm not super skinny by any means, but I think I just wanted to be like, you know, yeah. like I'd seen in the press. And I think so many people feel that, not even just like me who like is in that environment, you know, yeah. like I go to all these fashion week things and all these events and stuff and see these people in real life, but... For do the people think, that do you think everyone's on it? I don't think everyone's on it, but I think it's clear. I think we can look at the the pictures and see who we think is, you know, yeah. you can take a wild guess and I think it's probably accurate. Um, but like you, I, had, you had a really bad reaction, didn't you? Ended really up bad reaction. So I took too much. Um, but so I how was it administered? I got it through a dodgy doctor who, it's so bad. A friend <laughs> of mine has a doctor and he is, he's not like back alley, you know, he's not like, you know, like giving it to me out of like a cardboard box. But like he, um, <laughs> he, um, he worked with um, like a rich family that my friend knows. And so he was kind of doing it under the table, you know, like yeah. not actually prescribing it because you have Which to be- Which is terrifying when so many people like yes, die. Yes, so way with... terrifying. And like, I can't believe that he actually did it. Like how his conscience is okay with doing that. Because I didn't realize at the time, because I knew so, I knew that people were going on it mm -hmm. and I didn't hear anything bad. So I thought, oh, okay, there's like no side effects. Like I didn't properly read up about it. Because there's a lot of conflicting theories about it in the press. You know, it, it's really good. It lowers, it, it, there's a lot of benefits to it. Yeah. But then you also hear some horror stories. Yeah. Thyroid cancer, seizures. Exactly, yeah. There are so many. And I've actually had people message me about like them having seizures and things like that too, wow. which is so crazy. Like, and they got it administered the right way as well. And they're having side effects from it. So it's like, it probably could have been anyone. Mm -hmm. um, and it's probably the drug that just doesn't work well with me. Um, but... I mean, there could, yeah, there's probably other people out there that have had the same reaction. It's just like, it's just scary, honestly. And the amount that I was taking, and I didn't know this, was actually for somebody that's over 100 kilos. And I weighed 50 something. And I went down from 60 to then 56. In how I got down to in about two weeks. And then from there, I went down from 56 to 52 in another two weeks. And it was, and I, when I went to the doctor, I said, I don't feel good. I can't keep any water down. Can't keep any liquids down. I was sick for like a week. And I said, I can't eat anything. Like I went at like two in the morning because I was starting to feel really, so I was like, something's wrong, yeah. you know? And they got, they, I, when I got there, they were like, take us straight to like A&E. Like they literally put me in a wheelchair, wheeled me through the hospital, sent me straight there. I was like, oh my God, what's going on? And when I got there, there was a little bit of a wait and I was sat in the chair and I remember just really not feeling good. I was like, something's not right. Like there's, I always started to feel something. And I'd never have, never had a seizure before. And my friend was with me and I was like, babe, I need to go in right now. Like I need to go in right now. And I just, I lost like, I function of my mouth. Like I couldn't speak properly. It was like, that, it's like your tongue says swollen up. So I was talking like this, I couldn't speak properly. And I started really panicking. And then like, I couldn't move my legs. I couldn't move, and then everything started, like your whole body starts to like vibrate. And they had to like pin me down and pin my legs down. And I was like going like, it was literally like, like proper, like your body goes into like shock. Um, and was that because of the lack of food? It was a lack of water. I didn't have any any water in my system. Like, so I, my body just was like in shock. Shut yeah, down. basically it shuts down. Yeah, your body just starts to shut down. 
And um, yeah, it was, I mean, it was so terrifying. Like I really, I, it's it, your whole body like cramps almost. Like I couldn't, like my hand was going like that and I couldn't stop my, my like I was literally like almost like cutting my hands because I was yeah. going like that so hard and you can't stop it. And it's horrible. It's genuinely like scared me so badly. Like I would never, even if like, it was like, you'll be skinny forever now, like take this potion and I would go through that again. I would never do it. It was terrifying, mm. you know, so yeah. So for anyone listening, yeah, for anyone about- listening, thinking about going on it, but yeah, that's the thing. That's why I aim to do though, and I think that's why, like, I like about myself. I like that I'm like honest about shit like that. Like, I'm yeah. honest about my drugs and my alcohol. I'm honest about you know what I've been through. I'm honest about like my that I'm not a very like you know sometimes I'm not the most confident person. Sometimes I'm not like you know I think we we like to on social media portray that we have it all together and we're so confident and happy and like everything's going well. You know, it's okay but I think to have a bad day. It's okay, and I think it's good for for people that aren't in the public eye to see that people in the public eye actually do have, do have problems as well, you know? Like, yeah. life isn't sorted once you get money and you get rich and you get famous or whatever. It's just not, you know? No. So, yeah. <laughs> so you speaking out about your Zempic experience has sparked a bit of controversy. Mm. You know, you've got people supporting you and people giving you a bit of backlash. What would you say to those people? I mean, I understand the backlash because there is obviously a lack of Ozempic right now. And that is super dangerous and, you know, really unfair for the people that actually have diabetes and need this medication. Um, and obviously, yeah, I completely regret taking it now and I have learned my lesson. Um, but I, I honestly, I only came out and said about it because I know how many people are misusing it right now. Yeah. And... I just think that no one has really spoken out about it. And I mm-hmm. think it's good that somebody does. Um, so yeah, I'll take the backlash with it. You know, I've, I've faced a lot of backlash in my life. It's not the first and it won't be the last. So yeah, you know, I, I hugely regret it. And I think maybe me talking about my experience with it will stop someone else who is misusing it yeah. from using it, you know. So what's next for you, Lottie? And I know you've got your podcast, Dream On which I am a huge fan of. <laughs> Thank you. But you are so open. You talk about literally everything. Like I've got four kids. I can't even say the word S-E-X <laughs> without going bright red and dying thinking my mom's going to listen to this, you know. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I mean, I'm loving the podcast and I hope we can just like level it up and level it up. Obviously, I love talking about like sex and, you know, love and relationships, but I think, you know, there is much more to me. So I think I'd love to like delve deeper as well because, you know, it's all very lighthearted and stuff, but, you know, there are things about me that I'd like to, you know, speak about. And I think I've just got much more to offer. So I'm excited to carry on with that and get some really fun guests on. Um, And then... Yeah, I've just got this TV show coming out and yeah, just hopefully onwards and upwards, more opportunities and Definitely. yeah. So tell me a little bit more about your podcast. Why did you do it? So um, I got approached by a great team mm-hmm. and I just thought it felt right. And it was at a time where I was actually really ready to like just speak my truth. And, you know, I think I've gotten to a place where I can actually talk about my feelings and talk about who I am and be open and... Yeah you know, not be scared or whatever and just be myself. And it's honestly, it's really helped me to be myself more and more. Like every episode that I do, I feel like I'm coming into myself more Mm. and becoming more and more confident. Like I wasn't very confident at the beginning of sort of last year, but the beginning of this year from this podcast, I've just become more like confident. Mm. I love speaking to people. I love talking, obviously. (laughs) (laughs) And um, yeah, I just, I I, I love where it's been taking me. I mean, we went to Reading and Leeds and that was fucking amazing. So you know, I think just, I love doing stuff like that and, you know, just making me really happy. So, yeah. Well, I think you're doing it very well. I'm a huge fan of it and thank you for coming on today. Thank you so You've much for incredible. having me on. And I'll be seeing you on my podcast soon. Yes, I hope. Oh, come on. <laughs> the gorgeous Lottie Moss. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>